Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a drama film, talk to her. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. On stage, a woman wanders as if blind or dazed, and a man is standing behind her. It is a melodrama that brings tears to two protagonists of the movie, Marco and Benigno. In the audience, we see two men who are still strangers to each other at this point. Just by looking at each other, they know they have a story each to tell. Benigno is a male nurse, who takes care of the comatose ballerina Alicia. Like any other day, Benigno massages Alicia's hands and tells her about his daily experiences. Even though Alicia is not able to respond, Benigno continues to talk to her as if she is perfectly normal. Marco is a journalist who cries easily, because he is easily overwhelmed by the beauty of those touching moments. One day, Marco chances upon Lydia at one of her television interviews. Lydia is at the height of her fame, the most famous matador in Spain. During the talk show, Lydia argues with the host, for she just broke up with her boyfriend, and she is moody. Intrigued by the female bullfighter, Marco asks permission from his boss to do a report on Lydia. So Marco finds his way into Lydia's performance. In the bull ring, Lydia who is dressed in red, moves nimbly with the strong bull. Lydia's eyes are all on the bull, while Mark's eyes are all on Lydia. After the performance, Marco follows Lydia to the pub, and invites her for an interview. At first, Lydia is not interested in doing a report for this boring journalist. Though she declines the invitation, Marco still sends her home and prepares to drive away. Unexpectedly, he hears Lydia's piercing screams after he just makes a U-turn. Moments later, Lydia suddenly runs out of her house, and catches up with his car. She rushes into the car to tell him there is a snake at her house. Now Marco learns her secret. She is fearless about bulls but paralyzingly frightened of snakes. He calms her down and gets down his car to catch the snake. Afterward, Marco manages to capture the scary creature, but Lydia announces she will never be able to go back into that house again. So Marco gives her a ride to a hotel. What they have gone through makes Lydia think slightly better of the man. Out of appreciation, she agrees to do an interview for him. The next day, Marco fetches Lydia for the interview session. When they are on the topic of relationship, Lydia tells Marco that she is not going back to her house or touch anything within it. The snake aside, she also wants to forget about her ex-boyfriend, who has left many traces and marks in her life. A soft and understanding man, Marco knows why she makes such a choice. On the other hand, Benigno is helping Alicia with hair wash and haircut. The weather is getting warmer, so his female colleague suggests that he should do it quickly. But Benigno insists on trimming the girl's hair with patience and care. He wants Alicia to wake up and see she is beautiful and gracious as in the past. A few months pass by, Marco and Lydia are closer to each other than before. Over time, Marco's affection for Lydia grows. He is in love with this simple and resilient lady. This day, Lydia is going to have another contest. Changing into her gorgeous suit, she stands before the bull confidently. To her shock, the fighting bull is exceptionally fierce. As it rushes to the ring to attack her relentless, Lydia is soon knocked down succumb to her wound, and losing her consciousness. Marco runs to Lydia immediately, and sends her to the hospital with the security guards. Unfortunately, she falls into a coma due to neurological damage to her brain. In the ward, Marco touches the medals Lydia always brings with herself. He is thrown back to the sweet time they once had on the riverbank, when Lydia gave him a back hug. Now that Lydia has become a vegetable, he cannot help but feel really sad for her. He is so frustrated that he even sheds tears in his dream. One day, Marco walks past Alicia's ward, where he finds Benigno is taking care of her. He thinks of greeting him, and Benigno recognizes him at first sight. A devoted nurse, Benigno massages Alicia and tells her about Marco. Watching the interaction between Benigno and Alicia, Marco remembers that Lydia will not wake up again. Marco bottles up his feelings and bids farewell to Benigno. Shortly after he leaves, Alicia's father comes to visit his daughter. Father is a psychologist, and Benigno has consulted him regarding his own sexual inclination. When he sees Benigno massaging Alicia's thigh muscles, he worries that this nurse will harbor sinister intentions towards his daughter. So just to confirm he is gay, father asks Benigno he likes men or women. Stunned by his question, Benigno answers that he likes a man, and has already got a partner. Father is finally relieved upon hearing his words, and tells him to take good care of Alicia. On a sunny afternoon, Marco discovers Benigno conducting a reading session with Alicia. He treats Alicia like a normal person, and talks to her constantly. Curious Marco visits them and asks Benigno what happens between him and the patient. Benigno does not hide, 
but generously shares the story of his one-sided love. Four years ago, when Benigno stood before the window of his house, he was able to see a dance studio opposite to him. Every day a group of dancers gathered at the studio for practice. Alicia was one of the dancers to make it her daily routine. Benigno falls for the gracious and elegant Alicia, and could not have enough of watching her dance movements. Finally, the chance arrived for him to interact with her. Alicia dropped her wallet on the way back home, and Benigno picked it up for her. This was the first time Benigno spoke to his dream lover, and he boldly asked if he could walk her home. Moved by his kindness Alicia gave him the permission. They had a walk together until Alicia arrived at her apartment. Benigno discovered that Alicia's father was a psychologist, whose office was located at their house. As this might create a chance to meet Alicia again, he booked a consultation appointment with father. After the session Benigno sneaked into Alicia's room, and grabbed her hair clip. Just when he was about to leave, he bumped into Alicia, who just finished bathing. Alicia misunderstood that Benigno was a pervert, who had been stalking her. Benigno explained that he was here as father's patient and left. Little does he expect that to be the last conversation between them. A few days later, Alicia was crushed by a car and became comatose. Upon receiving this shocking news, Benigno thought of all ways to approach her. With the experiences he gained from caring for his own mother, he finally became a devoted nurse for Alicia. Benigno talks to Alicia most of the time. When he learns that Alicia likes movies, he watches all the shows he thinks she would have liked and tells her about them. Marco thinks his efforts are futile because Alicia cannot hear or feel anything. But Benigno firmly believes that communication is important for Alicia. It is his earnest hope that Alicia will miraculously regain her consciousness. Despite having conflicting views, friendship is forged between the two men, as they share the same fate. Marco and Benigno bring their ladies for a sunbath, when Marco reveals his own love story. Shortly after their romantic relationship comes into full bloom. Marco was invited to his ex-girlfriend's wedding. He was surprised to find Lydia showing up at the wedding hall. Lydia was moved to tears during the wedding ceremony, something which Marco did not fathom. He was led to think that Lydia was upset about him attending to his ex-girlfriend's matter. So he tried his best to reassure her that it was over. And he did not have to linger for the previous partner. But Lydia seemed to be deep in thoughts, and told him to sit down for a talk after her game. No one would expect her to fall into a coma state. The next day, when Marco visits Lydia, he finds Lydia's ex-boyfriend holding her hand and talking to her. To Marco's disbelief, the ex-boyfriend says that he and Lydia patched back one month prior to the match. Lydia planned to make it known to Marco at the wedding. Marco comes to realize that the tears Lydia had shed at the ceremony have nothing to do with him. Looking at the ex-boyfriend caring for Lydia and kissing on her hand, Marco has to acknowledge that he is the outsider. In torment, Marco decides to flee the city and tour around the world, so that he can finish his travel biography. Benigno gives his full support for the plan. Before the departure, the two men have a farewell dinner. Benigno tells Marco that he wants to get married to Alicia, but Marco thinks he is daydreaming. He awakens Benigno that his love is merely a monologue, and Alicia is totally unaware of his presence. However, Benigno rejects his advice, and insists on marrying his dream girl. Sometime later, the hospital finds out that Alicia is pregnant. As Benigno does not send in a report of Alicia's period, he is soon identified as the suspected culprit. In fact, it is Benigno who gives Alicia intimate massages and impregnates her. Eight months later, Marco reads from the newspaper that Lydia passes away. He wants to confirm it with Benigno, only to find him in prison for raping Alicia. Marco returns to the city immediately, and pays a visit to Benigno at the prison. It is hard for him to believe that Benigno has done such a thing to Alicia. Benigno does not defend himself, and he is full of concern for Alicia and the fetus. Love is blind, and Marco feels so helpless before such a desperate man. In order to pay the lawyer, Benigno rents his apartment to Marco. On the first day he moves in, Marco locates the window through which Benigno used to watch Alicia. To his surprise, as he looks at the dance studio, he finds Alicia smiling at the dancers. Alicia is miraculously awakened from her coma state. To have a thorough understanding of the situation, Marco journeys to father's clinic. It turns out after Alicia wakes from her long sleep, she gives birth to a stillbirth baby boy. Father does not tell Benigno the truth, worrying that he might do something out of his mind. After much thoughts, Marco finally updates Benigno about Alicia's current status. Benigno sheds tears of gratitude for Marco, and he also feels sorry for being unable to stay beside Alicia. 
A few days later, Marco receives a call from Benigno, saying that he is leaving. He knows clearly that he might not have a chance to exit the prison. But he cannot live in a world without Alicia. Filled with worries, Marco rushes to the prison immediately. However, by the time he reaches, Benigno has already put a stop to his secret admiration and his life. He has left a letter to Marco, explaining why he takes such a move. Apart from the letter Marco also picks up Benigno's belongings, which include the hair clip that he cherishes. Marco places the hair clip together with Benigno as a way to make them united. Afterward, Marco attends a performance at the theater, where he met Benigno for the very first time. Coincidentally, Alicia is there among the audience. Perhaps it is because the two of them are both connected to Benigno. Alicia finds Marco familiar and greets him. Soon after, the show begins. On stage, the protagonists are getting closer to one another. In the audience, Marco and Alicia are sitting one row apart, enjoying the melodrama. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.